Hello, hello. I'm going to, um, I'm pressed for time. It's 1.45, so I have to, I've got to go to my internship starting at 2. Actually, i got to go look for an apartment at 2. So I'm going to read from the Writer's Almanac for uh, Thursday, February the 9th, 2012. And we start with, on this day in 1964, the Beatles appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show for the first time as teenagers screamed hysterically, mostly females, right? Uh, in the audience and 73 million people watched from home. A record for American television at the time. Their appearance on the show is considered the beginning of the British invasion of music in the United States. The Beatles appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show the following two Sundays in a row. I didn't know that as well. Huh. On the first time, exactly 47 years ago today, they sang All My Loving, Till There Was You, She Loves You, and I saw her standing there. And finally, they sang, I want to hold your hands, which is the hand, which is which had just hit number one on the charts, which is great. Oh, man, what a what a night that would have been, not only for them, but for the United States. Ed Sullivan, think about that. Cool. Where are shows like that? I like Ed Sullivan. It was on this day in 1870 that the U.S. National Weather Service was established. At first, it was called the Weather Bureau, and it was part of the War Department because it was said, quote, military discipline would probably secure the greatest promptness, regularity, and accuracy in the required observations, unquote. It became a civilian agency 20 years later under the Department of Agriculture, makes total sense, and then was switched to the Commerce Department in 1940. Commerce? That makes no sense. No sense. Department of Agriculture totally makes all the sense in the world, right? Right? These days, the National Weather Service is based out of Silver Spring, Maryland. It plays a very big role in making sure that American air travel is safe, providing up-to-the-minute weather updates to air tra traffic controller centers across the nation. It is the birthday of theoretical physicist Brian Greene, born in New York City in 1963. Such a brilliant man. The son of a vaudeville performer, he's best known for his work on string theory, sometimes called a step on the road to the theory of everything, all of the particles and basic forces of nature. He's a professor at Columbia and has tried to explain theoretical physics to the general public in a number of books, including The Elegant Universe, Super Strings, Hidden Dimensions, and The Quest for the Ultimate Theory. That was published in 1999. That was all one sentence and a book about parallel universes and the deep laws of the cosmos called The Hidden Reality, published in 2011. It is the birthday of Alice Walker, born in Eatonton, Georgia. Eatonton, Eatonton, Georgia. She was born in Eatonton, Georgia in 1944. She was the youngest of eight children, the daughter of poor sharecroppers. <clears throat> Walker graduated first in her high school class and won a scholarship to Spelman College in 1961. She transferred to Sarah Lawrence after two years, and a, and a short story she wrote there was sent to Langston Hughes, who became an early champion of her writing. In 1968, she published her first collection of poetry called Once, and her first novel called The Third Life of Grange Copeland. In 1970, about a poor share, a family of poor sharecroppers in the 1920s. Throughout the 60s and 70s, Alice Walker had a modest following, but it wasn't until her third novel, The Color Purple, 1982, won both the Pulitzer Prize and the National Book Award that her work reached a much larger audience. She once wrote, quote, Writing saved me from the sin and inconvenience of violence, unquote. It is the birthday of, hang on a second, I'm sorry, I have to, something's clicking over here. I am so distracted. It's 149, I'm under the gun. I, I you see, I, I just collapse when I'm under pressure. It's the, it's the birthday of Irish playwright and novelist, Brendan Bahan, born in Dublin, Ireland, 1923. He grew up in one of the poorest sections of Dublin, his father took part in the Irish Rebellion in the early 1920s, and when Brendan was born, his father was being held in a British prison. 
When Brendan was nine years old, he joined a youth organization that had ties to the IRA. He later called the group the Republican Boy Scouts. He rose to the ranks of the IRA, and by the time he was 16, he was sent on missions to bomb British targets. He spent most of the 1940s in prison. First, he was thrown into jail for carrying a suitcase full of homemade explosives through the streets of Liverpool. After he got out, he was arrested for the attempted murder of two policemen. It was during his second stay in prison that he began to write. He wrote his first play, The Choir Fellow, in 1956, about the execution of a convict in a Dublin prison. When he got out of prison, it became a big hit in London and then New York. He followed up with the novel Orstow Boy in 1958 and The Hostage also in 1958, in which he wrote, let me, let me try an Irish accent, never throw stones at your mother. You'll be sorry for it when she's dead. Never throw stones at your mother. Throw bricks at your father instead. Here's a poem by Marge Piercy called February Underground. Three feet of snow in 24 hours on top of seven inches. Not really credible here. On the fourth day, we found a car under a six foot drift and dug it out. At first, we could not open doors. The post office shut down for two days. Our road had vanished into a field. We felt the sky had finally fallen and drowned us. Six weeks. Now, patches of ground emerge from white fortresses. How beautiful is the dirt I took for granted. Extraordinary the wild green of grasslands. Having the world snatched from us makes us grateful even for fence posts, for wheelbarrow rising, for the stalwart spears of daffodil uncovered. Everything revealed is magical, splendid in its ordinary shining. The sun gives birth to rose bushes of myrtle, a snow shovel fallen, overcome on the field of battle. February Underground by Marge Piercy from The Crooked Inheritance. It's a, the, in, the Crooked Inheritance, published by Alfred A. Knopf in 2006, reprinted with permission for the writer's almanac. Production credits include Garrison Keillor as the host, Betsy uh, Allister, Priscilla Kinter, Heather McPherson, and Holly Vanderhaar were the writers. Technical director was Thomas Schweitzer. The engineer was Noah Smith. The coordinator was Nick Vetter, and permissions were obtained by Miss Kathy Roach. As Garrison Keillor says, be well, do good work, and keep in touch.